So the King's Elite, that's our project. It's a animated series that Warner Brothers is paying us to make. Oh, they are? How nice. I know, in our, in our ideal world here. <laughs> yeah. And it's an animated series. It's going to have 22 minute long episodes because you have to leave room for commercials. And there's going to be 12 episodes in the season. There's going to be two seasons. We we're just so excited that we've got our first major proje project from Warner Brothers. And their target audience is a little bit older this time. We're going to go for kind of teens and fans of fantasy adventure with lots of action, humor, drama, all that stuff. There's going to be some fantasy violence, though, so not for the little kids. And maybe some thematic elements is basically a loophole for ratings to say that there might be some things in here you object to. We gave you notification. <laughs> So that could be as simple as like, oh, magic, are you teaching my kid to be a witch? No, no, we're right. not. <laughs> <laughs> so the world that we are populating is a fantasy world where all the people, quote unquote, are animals. They're going to be mammals, land only, birds, reptiles, amphibians, and they dress in clothes. However, you will have to make your own decision whether or not they wear clothes like Donald Duck, no pants, or if they wear clothes like Mickey, only pants, <laughs> or if they were shirts and pants, that's kind of up to you. I noticed uh, when I was doing some research in Disney's Robin Hood, you have some no pants, some pants, some no clothes at all, some just hats. So it kind of depends on your own preferences, whether or not you're going to dress your character's head to toe or not. So a group of the king's elite adventurers are sent out on missions on each episode to protect the kingdom from any threats like monsters, enemy invasions of the evil fish people or something, and the occasional rock giant. So they guard the kingdom. We've got some Pinterest boards that are going to be the home of our inspirational images. So I'm going to click on this link here and take us over into some images that show us kind of what we're going to be drawing or what the world is going to be like. So you can explore these on your own time once we get some free time in here. There's a lot of backgrounds. And then lower down, we've got kind of what we're going for. Animal people dressed in some clothes, kind of Renaissance fair, Middle Ages type fantasy stuff, Lord of the Rings style. And we've got this guy here. I like uh -huh. him. Nice big stag guy. He looks like kind of a dwarf vibe to me with his big hammer and chiseled shield. So that's the inspiration board that you can come back to just to get a feeling for what are we doing again. Here's this cat one I like too. I thought that was great. And there's cat warrior and our cat mage. And then we have, let me go back to my animation brief. Art direction. Art direction is more like art style, even though that's what we're going to be drawing, cat people or animal people and uh, fantasy stuff, what kind of style. It needs to be expressive because we are working for our animated project. So if we draw them super realistic, if you've seen the uh, computer generated Lion King that they did, that everybody said was awful because there was no emotion. <laughs> Because this animal, realistic animal faces just can't convey the human emotion that cartoon ones can. So we're going to get more expressive faces. And again, there's some pictures on Pinterest that kind of give us a guide on cartoony faces. It's not exactly like how to draw step by step, but again, just more like reference of expressions, having, expressions, having enough ability to you know have lips that are going to lip sync that can be stretched and squashed eyes that are big enough to see if we can get a worried expression or an angry expression i tend to find the common thing between all these styles is definitely the eyes and the ability to stretch or to change the mouth into the different sorts of shapes that will need if we do a expression sheet like i'm pretty sure dogs can't do that little side smile but in animation they can so that's what we're going to be doing there 
So that board is there for us whenever we need to check back in on what kind of animating style. So our job on this project, as I mentioned before, we need to design the nine main characters for this series. And we'll be working on one character profile each week. Today is a dog. And here he is. Let's see if I can enlarge this so it's easier to read. Do, do, no, maybe? Nope, I guess not. Oh yeah, there it goes. So we've got Diggory Dunfer the third. Like his father and his father before him, Diggory is a knight who plays by the book, a shining example of loyalty to the king. He leads his team with an unwavering sense of honor and duty. However, he is so flamboyant about this that he's often not taken seriously by the bad guys or by his own teammates. Particularly when he starts throwing around bad jokes and puns. Oosh. Despite his bravado, he's terrified of bugs, particularly fleas. And avoiding <coughs> one seems to be scratching a lot so he doesn't catch the fleas. And on his days off, he's most certainly going to see a play at the town theater. And carries an ornate sword, so a fancy sword, not just a, a generic one. And he's probably going to wear a cape or maybe a flamboyantly feathered hat. And we've got a board specifically for Diggory. If we click on the link here. I just got a bunch of images that may be helpful. There's dog noses, dog feet, different weapons, capes, armor styles, just all your research done for you. Bunch of dog breeds, because notice that our briefing didn't actually say what breed of dog he was. So oh, you yeah. can make a little pug, you can make a giant uh, German Shepherd, you can make a big old St. Bernard, that's up to you to pick the dog. And there's some different armor styles. We can even learn a little bit about the names of Chainmail and Vambrace and Gauntlet. And there's some feathered hats and capes. Our knight in shiny armor. So that's kind of like his inspiration board that we're going to be checking back to. But before we get into all that fun stuff, let's go ahead and start working on the basic animal person. I want to say like mannequin. Like but there are basic our basic uh, proportion for the body and everything. I'm going to start up Fire Alpaca. This is going to be digital. This is a digital class. If you prefer to do a traditional, that's fine. But I'm going to be working on Fire Alpaca. I think you were mentioning before that it gets a little hard with tiny windows. But we can fake it. I think it takes practice. I just so. take practice. I'll try to zoom in a bit more so you can see what I'm doing. So let's share screen with Fire Alpaca. The unfortunate part is I don't think it'll tell me if anybody comes in the waiting room, but maybe. I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to get a new file. And that'll take a minute. And we're not making a comic, so leave it on the standard tab. I'm going to do a regular piece of paper, 11 by 8 and a half. Actually, I'll switch that. No, yeah, I'll keep it wide. I'll keep it landscape. Width 11, height 8 and a half. 200 dpi or more, whatever your computer can take. The bigger this number is, the slower it'll be to do anything on your file, but we want at least 200 dpi in case we want to print it someday. And then we'll say, OK. So I'm just going to zoom into my paper here where we're going to do some little thumbnails. I'll name my first layer thumbnails. And I usually like to sketch in a different color other than black, so I'm going to pick a light blue and get my pencil. So first we're going to do just like we used to do in our other character design class, where we're going to do a little bit of thumbnailing with proportions and such. So we start 
by just sketching out what if his head is kind of wide? What if his body is kind of tall? And what if his legs are kind of short? We're going to be doing digigrade anthros, meaning the ones that stay on their toes. I'm just going to sketch out a little guy like this. So what we're playing around with in this first, first run through of thumbnails, I don't know if you remember way back when we used to talk about a snowman. Small, medium, large. Whoops, larger than that. And how that is very expected, typical. So we try to change things around and put maybe medium on top, small in the middle, large on the bottom, or large on top, then medium, then small or small on top, then large, and then medium. We try to play with those different shapes. Small, medium, large doesn't necessarily mean fatter this way. It can also just mean taller this way. So right now I've got kind of a short distance here, then a long distance, and then kind of a medium distance for the legs. We're going to play around with a couple of those. We'll maybe do three different shapes. Three different shapes to play with. What if he had... Stop. What's that? How, how did you erase those guys? That was kind of cool. Era oh. I have to show me how to erase my snowman. Sure. I grabbed the little peanut little lasso tool okay. over on the side here, or you can get the dotted square one too. It doesn't matter. Okay, I got the peanut. Mm -hmm. I draw it around that guy, right? Yep, you draw it around whatever you're going to delete. You can hit the delete key, or it's easier for me to just cut it, control X. Okay, now I have this green, or this purple background. Yeah, that's showing you what you're not going to erase. All right, then how do I go back to normal? Control D for deselects. Oh, control D. So now my background is sort of, um, it's not white. It's Was it like checkerboard? Yeah. Oh, okay, we can fix that. We're going to make another layer and drag it to the bottom. Let's see, I will, you won't be able to see when mine changes, so I'm going to try to make another layer below it. Pretend this gray is your checkerboard. Ignore that layer three. So what you're okay. doing is you've got your layer here, we're going to call this one paper or white, just so that you know it's a layer that you're not going to draw on. Then we'll get the white color for our paint bucket and make sure that it's set to layer, not canvas, layer. And then we'll just fill that in white. But nothing happened. Nothing happened. Let me see if I can find the environment settings. No. Let's see, since we haven't done anything, let's get a new file. And right where it says background color, instead of transparent, we'll just set it to color. Oh, OK, file. That's good. Yeah. File new, 11 by 8, paper size resolution, okay. color. And then it came out white. And then it came out white? Yep, OK. So that, then I'm gonna, that's going to be my um, now renamed thumbnails. Yeah, it's going to be thumbnails. All right, so that was just a little detour. That's all right, a little refresher on how to use Fire Alpaca. So we'll take a few minutes and just doodle some things and come back once we have kind of a shape that we like. We do try, try to keep in mind that he's heroic, so probably no hunched posture or Anything like that, we want something probably broad in the chest. And you can also, I think it's easier to do it in profile, 
kind of give yourself an idea of what the muzzle might be like, what the ears might be like, since he is a dog. It's kind of nice to know, is it going to be more wolf-like? Is it going to be more pug-like? I really want to try a pug. I'm sure it's kind of little, little ears. If you run out of paper, you can always go up to edit and canvas size and you can add pixels onto your paper. It really doesn't matter how big it gets. I'm going to add on 5,000. Well, we can think back to our shape psychology. We want somebody strong, we use block. Angles. Maybe St. Bernard or a boxer. Of course, you can always do one that's a little more human proportioned. It doesn't have to be so exaggerated. So ears are already very close and <laughs> yeah I kind of jumped to some things that I know are going to be a part of this character oh yeah tails yeah I'm probably gonna see what kind of tail he's gonna have or is he gonna have a tail at all I mean that's not in the briefing whether or not they have to have tails so if you like tails add it and if you think it's too much of a pain don't add it the only thing I'd say is be consistent because we know that later we're going to do a cat and if we really want a tail on that cat, probably going to put a tail on the dog, too. Let's say you don't necessarily want to make your paper bigger, but you want to make these guys smaller. You can hit that control T, T for transform, and you'll get the scale box. So you can just shrink those guys down since they're supposed to be thumbnails anyway. And I'll give you room to draw a few more. Where am I going to find scale? Control T. Oh, control. 
control. Key for transform. Oh, transform. Yeah. Okay, so it didn't stay there. I made um, it small and then it... Does it pop back? Yeah. Try hitting enter after you get it to where you want it. Ah, that worked. Okay. I'm going to go for 10 thumbnails. Mostly I'm just changing the breed of dog <laughs> to see what shapes I like best. Let's see what else. The husky. Michaela's here, it looks like her in. Well, Michaela will have an easy time because she knows Hi. how to do. Sorry. Hello. Hi. You'll catch up in a minute because I'm just barely 
hanging on here, you fire <laughs> alpaca. <laughs> also, this is, is it just teaching the basics? No, this is character design. So let me show you our briefing for this term. Or I can just give you the link, whichever is easier. Let's see, your screen sharing is paused. Why? Let's do a new share. How about that? So in the chat, you'll see a link, and it goes to this page, the King's Elite. I keep saying that, but there's no the King's Elite. And this gives the details of our imaginary project. We've been hired by Warner Brothers to make a cartoon. And then down at the bottom, you'll see a couple of links to different Pinterest boards. Some are inspirational images for the world. Some are inspirational images for art direction, the art style that we need to do for an animated show. And then at the very, very bottom, you'll find today's character, Diggory Dunford III. Wow. Yeah, so there's his whole personality. <coughs> and then he is going to carry a sword and maybe wear a cape or a feathered hat. And there's another Pinterest board. This is probably the most important Pinterest board of all. If you're only going to look at one, look at this one because it has a bunch of images related to dogs, related to knights, related to anthros in general. We're going to be doing digigrade legs this uh, term, so we're going to be working on those. Oh, I love digigrade. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of costume references. There's even armor to put on digigrade legs. Look at that. People do everything. They just figure this stuff out for us. We just got to go out and find it, huh? <laughs> owie, owie. Yeah, so we're not going to have to draw shoes. Yay! We don't have to do that. Wait, are we going for a specific breed? Of nope, you get to choose the breed. That's why I have some pictures on here of dog breeds in case you're not sure. Oh, what kind of dog do I want? This one has just athletic dogs, different kinds of runners. If you want to do that, if you want like stronger dogs, you can look for ones that are a little thicker in the body. There's one that had just faces, if you want to concentrate on faces, it's going to be pretty much covered up by armor. I thought I had one of faces. Do, 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 do. Oh, there it is. Look at all those cute puppies. Wow. So if you're overwhelmed, you're like, oh no, what am I going to do? Just give yourself a limitation. So like, I'm going to pick from the top row. Okay, whew, that takes it down. I don't maybe don't want a big fluffy face. Maybe I don't want upright ears because we're going to be doing a cat next and I don't want two characters to have, you know, pointy ears. So maybe that'll cut them out. So all we've got left is floppy ones like a beagle or a bloodhound or an Irish setter or whatever this one is. Airedale. It's an Airedale. So don't let the options overwhelm you. This term we're going to focus on how do we cut out what we don't need? <laughs> how do we make a decision? by cutting out some of the things that we don't need. So we want to focus in on his character, big strong guy. If you want to do a wolf even, you can do a wolf. Big strong guy, super loyal. Because super I feel like one thing that I'm missing that would cause me to like, one of the main factors that caused me to choose what his breed is, is like knowing his personality. His personality is written in there. I don't have his, I don't have his thing. Oh, his thing? Well, let's go over it real quick. Yeah. So he's from a long line of knights. His father and his father before him have served the king. And he plays by the book. He's a rule follower. A shining example of loyalty. He's going to lead his team with an unwavering sense of honor and duty. However, he is so over the top, so flamboyant, that a lot of the bad guys don't take him seriously. His own team sometimes doesn't take him seriously. Because he is here to bring justice to the land. Okay, and he gets a little over the top. So he has a little bit of trouble controlling his team. And despite his big bravado, all of his showiness of being a warrior of justice and all that, he's terrified of bugs, particularly fleas. He does not want to have an infestation of fleas. So he avoids anybody who's like scratching and might have fleas, just stays so far away from them. Loves the theater, goes on every day off that he has to see a great play, which is probably where he gets his very flamboyant nature. So I'm thinking a kind of a little bit of Darkwing Duck. He was very flamboyant and had a lot of theatrical stuff to his character. 
maybe a little bit of the old style Spider-Man who was always throwing around a lot of puns when he was fighting bad guys. This is a sticky situation, that kind of stuff. And his flamboyance is going to be carried over into his uh, clothing more so. But his dog breed, you're thinking of a knight that has a little bit of a comical side. So I would think this is either going to go for strength, one that's, you know, a breed that's really strong, like Doberman Pinscher or like, you know, a German Shepherd or, you know, a big strong dog. Or else you're going to go for the comedy side, which would be like a pug or like a chihuahua or Pomeranian, something that's small and cute and is trying to be this grand knight, but isn't. So that's where I would think you would kind of go from, but that's his personality in a nutshell. Let me get the cat. Yeah, and I'm sorry I'm, I'm so late. So it's like I have questions that, I prob that were probably answered earlier. No um, go ahead and ask them. <laughs> you just ask them, we'll just go over it again. again. I can so use the review. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so what's the general tone of this? This one is right here. We've got like anthros. In a no, I mean of the angle. story. Like I kind of want to know. Oh, it's right in the brief. Let's go back up to the world and the tone. So it's set in a fantasy world where all the people are animals and the animals are limited to land mammals. So there's no whales walking around. There's no fish walking around. There are some birds. There's are reptiles. So you've got your lizards and your crocodiles. There are amphibians. So you've got your salamanders, frogs, but they're dressed in clothes that are more Middle Ages, more Lord of the Rings. Kind Wait, of are kind only of like the other, an other animals or, or everyone is? Everyone is like, like you know how Zootopia, where like there are no people, like the animals are people, and they're all dressed. Okay, yeah, because the way you said it, it kind of confused me. Oh, okay, sorry. But yeah, so they're all going to be anthros and clothes. Uh, we were talking about earlier how many clothes is kind of up to you. If you want to do it like Donald Duck style, where there's no pants, that's fine. If you want to do it completely covered, that's fine. But like in uh, Disney's Robin Hood, there's that little turtle kid who only has a hat and no clothes. Then there's Robin Hood who only has like a tunic. Then there's, you know, other characters that have pants and shirt and everything. So it kind of depends on just how much clothing you want to put on. That's up to you. Briefing does not specify. And this uh, series that we're designing for is about the king's elite adventurers, so like his best soldiers that he sends out on missions to protect the kingdom from monster threats, from enemy invasions, from the occasional rock giant, or the uh, fish person who crawls out of the ocean and wants to start a war. These guys go and they solve problems. So it's basically like Dungeons and Dragons. They just go out and do quests. Uh, so if you want some art for the general vibe of what exists in this world, that's under inspirational images. If you click this link here. So do I have access to animation, the animation brief? Yes, you should. It should be on that link in the chat box. If you don't- Oh, I didn't the look in the chat. I, I don't- Yeah, I don't know if it shows up for you because you weren't here when I originally posted. No, it's not showing up for me. Okay, so then I'll give it to you again so you can access this on your own and browse the Pinterest boards on your own. Copy this. Do, do, do. How do I copy this? Copy link, there we go. And then I'll go to the chat and I will paste it right there. There's gonna be nine characters and we are going to do one each week. And then on the last week, you get to pick the animal on your own. So you can be thinking about that the entire time if you like. Uh, okay, thank you. You're welcome. So you can do your character design process any way you want. I'm kind of sticking to what we did last time where we did like thumbnails first to kind of just explore what kind of dog we want and then move on to like poses and stuff like that. But if you just want to go ahead and start sketching the face, that's fine. It's up to you. I was on my 10th thumbnail here. I think I'm going to try out a wolf this time. Let's get rid of that guy. I 
personally, I'm more attached to like a, a bigger breed, like in my head. Like a Great Dane? Not that big. And not that big, just like, I guess, average. Just average height, yeah. Um, I do like number six, though. Which, like, in my head, I'm not sure if, like, that's that's the one I would go for, but I, I like it in general. I like it in general. Yeah, that's something I should have mentioned. You guys do not have to follow my decisions. Oh, yeah, you, I get you're that. You're going to make your own character. But I'm just showing you, like, what I'm doing so you have an idea of what to do. But if I pick, you know, number two, that doesn't mean that everybody has to do a pug. Uh, okay, thanks. Yeah, no problem. I don't know if I made that clear before. So just wanted to remind you, you are a character designer. You do not have to copy me. Try kind of a wolf guy here. Oh, wait, hold on. Someone needs my help getting out of this room. <laughs> Little Mau Mau. You can also start sketching on the cape or the hat if you want both or just one. There's also that picture on the Pinterest board that I like where he has his cloak kind of like wrapped around him. Let me go left hand side real quick. You know, part of me now that I'm thinking about it, part of me is thinking about making him uh, Jack Russell, like one of my dogs. Oh, nice. That's always an option too. Just take one of your pets and... Make him a star. Yeah, make him a star. Yeah, not directly like one of the my dogs, but more based off of the breed in general. Yeah, the breed in general. I thought I had a guy with like a yellow cloak wrapped around. Oh, there he is. Instead of just a typical cape, you might do one like this. I'm going to try that out with the twisting. That's cool. Yeah, I like it. I'm going to try it out. Let's see if it twists around the front. Oh. Also, I feel like if you if I did a Jack Russell, it'd probably be like a little more on the comedic side. That's fine. This story is going to have comedy and action. Also, fun fact: Jack Russells are really expressive, so oftentimes they'll put like put in movies and stuff because they're just fun to look at. This is true. Did you ever watch Wishbone? That was one of my favorite shows ever. You know, the little Jack Russell. No, I don't know what you're talking about at all. Oh, okay. Well, if you look it up, it's called Wishbone. And he would do interpretations of classic literature. So sometimes he would be like Shakespeare. Sometimes he'd do Romeo and Juliet. Sometimes he'd do, you know, Pride and Prejudice. So he was introducing kids to like classic books. But he was a little dog playing the main character and everybody else was human. But he was pretty expressive. And he was a Jack Russell Terrier. And his voice actor was great. He made that character. When I think of Jack Russell actors, I usually think of um, the dog from Frasier. Oh, yeah. I love that little dog. Eddie? Yeah, Eddie. Eddie. That's it. Yeah, my mom was super duper duper into Frasier for a while, so... So I have a lot of memories of that dog. <laughs> yeah, I love memories of Eddie. Also, fun fact: you can go like different angles because because Jack Russells can either be kind of like built, more athletic looking, or they can be like like kind of thick bodies with short, skinny legs. Mm -hmm. 
Sound IP. And I'll start in a second, but I'm low blood sugar, so I'm gonna gonna have some M and M's. All right. And I think you guys might not want to hear me eat them, so I'm gonna mute for a minute. Okay. <laughs> you can think while you chew. You'll be ready to go. So as I'm doodling, I'm already picking out some that are just not working. So for instance, number 10 over here with his sharp nose, kind of wolfish build. He's looking a little more like a villain. If you were to look at this page and go, which one's the villain? Probably him. So I'm not going to pick him. I think the pug is probably going to be a little bit of a challenge that I don't want to deal with. So I'm not going to do the pug. And some of these boxier ones tend to look too serious, like this guy looking too serious, this guy looking too serious. And get rid of them. This guy's just too generic, so I'm going to get rid of him. All right, I'm done eating my M&Ms. Okay. This guy's kind of the same thing, this really pointy snout. It's kind of making him look like a villain, so I'm not going to do that one. Um, Cutting it down. I do like the floppy ears though. I think I'm going to maybe do another thumbnail with some floppy ears. Well, one idea I have for my thing is sometimes when Jack Russell Terriers are hairier, they look like they have like stashes and beards. Oh, so that's I think clever. I yeah. Well, that, that's a good idea for a night. Yeah, I really like your thing where instead of with typical like armor and stuff, he, he has like a hat with a feather in it. Yeah, I think it's kind of like uh, Three Musketeers. Yeah, I think that's more theatrical than like a armor. Yeah, plus if he's got a helmet on, how are we going to see his expression in his face? So, so let's give him a hat instead. Yeah, oh. It's so weird looking at these Jack Russell Terriers and thinking, oh, that looks like one of my dogs. <laughs> I like that curly tail, too. Is it like a spaniel, water spaniel or something? I'll have to look it up. That curly tail. Hmm. Okay, now I'm thinking, what's this guy's main color? Which I feel like I don't really know because I literally have no grasp on any of the other characters, so I'm just going to choose something random. Yeah, he's going to be more like the like the average sort of straight man, so that everybody else can be more of the extreme character. Oh, he's the straight man. Yeah, so he's going to be the one that's kind of middle of the road, well-rounded, average fighter, average personality, you know, just kind of, he's probably the most generic of all of them. Huh, okay. So we'll have room to go more extreme for the other characters. That's interesting, because when I was thinking about him, I was thinking more of, remember the squirrel from the lab, from Labyrinth? Yeah, kind of like that guy. That's who I was thinking. on the dog, right? Yeah, that's what I was thinking his personality was. Yes, that is a very, very good comparison. Yeah, also I think that's the reason why I want to give him a beard. <laughs> yeah, for a minute I thought maybe I'd do one of those old English sheepdogs that have all the fur covering their eyes, but wait, this is going to be animated. We need to see their expressions. So no covering the eyes. The little beard, that'll be my little mustache. 
Yeah, I think I'm, right now I'm going to look up the Scotty from uh, Lady and the Tramp because uh, he has a beard, yeah, sort go. of. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's a, like good, he translates that well, so I'm gonna like look that that for inspiration. I forgot his name, but uh, he's probably really easy to find. Jock, Jock, that's that's it. Jock. Probably J. I like sock with a J. I'm just gonna look up Jock. Oh, there he is. Yeah, there he should be. Yep, all the funny little Scotty. Take a look at water spaniels and see if that's the actual dog I'm thinking of. Oh, and then you got a little dog dressed up like him. That's cute. Real life comparison. Aww. Oh, that's not me. Really... Yep. I also feel like this, like, is. Like, for me, also feels like Jack Russell fits, because I don't know if it's this all Jack Russells, but my dogs feel very dramatic. <laughs> Sounds like a good choice to me, then. Yeah, for a minute when I was thinking dramatic dogs, I thought of, like, huskies because of how dramatic they can be. Like, have you ever seen, like, those videos of, like, a husky throwing a tantrum? I haven't oh. I've seen, yeah, some, some drama. Yeah, but then I figured, nah, that that kind of I think figure like huskies like are kind of cool looking, and I feel like this character. I don't think I, I want to go for like a cool look. Yeah, more of a comedic one. Right? Part of me is thinking about maybe going for the one ear is over and then the other ear is like straight up look. But then I look at all these Jack Russell Terriers and I think, nope, none of these dogs have that. You can do it though. Yeah, and you the more I think about it, I think, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't want to do that. And the more I look at, like, this one dog I'm using for reference, the more I think, man, that looks like one of my dog's parents. Yeah. And it make, <laughs> because I got pictures when we first bought them. We got pictures of their parents. I think, huh, that looks like one of their parents. And I keep thinking, is that one of their parents? Because <laughs> one, one of their, their parents were technically show dogs. Oh, could be. Well, they could be. Isn't that Yeah, because... Yeah, because they were show dogs, but we got our dogs cheaper because they weren't, like, um, they had, like, deformities, technically, like, little things wrong with them that made them unable to be show dogs. Yeah, one of our dogs had a blue eye, so he was not acceptable into the show arena. He was... He was... So he gets a home instead. Yeah. It's a good deal. (laughs) Yeah. That's a neat little thing. Oh, my computer is freezing. And I'm, I, I want to save this image because I, I like this image specifically. Will 
doesn't give me nope it i don't think it, it's not giving me the name of the the, the specific dog so i i can't so i sadly cannot confirm whether this is one of my dog's parents or not Uh oh, not responding. Yeah. I ran like a bunch of the computers had like this big update, so it took like 10 minutes for the computer to straight up let me put in the password. Ooh, wow. <laughs> like over 10 minutes, actually. Like maybe 15 minutes. Did you guys have that? That no. scares me when that happens. That's usually Windows. Mm. Yeah, Windows, yeah. Oh, I hate it when they take so long. I always figure they're going to make it worse. Yeah, I kind I I kind of just deal with it. Yeah, but it just takes so long. Sometimes you have to like go out for lunch practically. <laughs> yeah, which is weird because this computer is pretty good. Like this computer is old, but it's good. So that so that was was concerning to me. Okay, now I'm trying to look for the image because it's we, which is giving me a hard time. Oh, there it is. Go ahead and draw another four minutes and then we'll talk about our next step. Sorry, I've sort of stop just doing a whole bunch of thumbnails and I'm working with smaller number of ideas. Sure. Say. I'm pretty I'm pretty like confident in what I'm doing. Like Jack Russell. No wrong answers. In my workflow, though, I'm going to save my thumbnails, even if I don't use all of them, and just put them in a folder. Whoops, that's not the folder button. Stick those in there. Part of me is like trying not to just talk your ear off about random Jack Russell facts right now. <laughs> <laughs> and part of you wants to tell us more. Yeah. yeah, just like random stuff about dogs that I learned when we were when we were first gonna get our dogs. As long as you can draw while talk. Yeah, we can draw while you talk. Oh Go yeah. Yeah, the fun fact they're they're pains to, they're kind of a pain to train because they're so smart. They're able to question like whether or not they actually want to listen to you. <laughs> Sounds more like a cat. Yeah, which is true, which also makes it a pain to just live with them day to day because they're constantly testing you. They just constantly test you like whether or not they, they want to listen. You must make up for it in other ways, though. Otherwise, nobody would choose them as their pet. They oh, yeah, they're very like cats. That's for <laughs> sure. Yeah. Well, the good things about my dogs specifically is they're affectionate. They they love like specifically with my dogs, they love getting attention. And one of them, one of them, I don't know what's wrong with him. Something is wrong with him where he's just like like the girl is straight up like lax for a Jack Russell, but. The other dog is just lax as for a dog. Like my mom compares him to like a hound dog than a than like a than like a Jack Russell. Like these guys are supposed to be super energetic, but he's just ridiculously lax to the point where it's a little concerning. 
You're not supposed to act this way. Huh? Don't forget to save your work. I'm gonna hit Control S and save. Wait, what did you say? I didn't hear you. Save your work. No, before that. Time. Time for you to save your work. Yes, time for you to save your work. You said something before that. Even before that. Uh, yeah, you said something like Jack under your breath. Something about Jack Russell. Yeah, something about. Something. You I don't know. know how energetic they are. But yours is really low key. Yeah. It's left my mind already. <laughs> it must not be that important if I can't. Okay, <laughs> then that's fine. Oh, uh, what am I naming this? This is Diggory. Diggory. Oh, that's his name. Yes. Diggory done for the third. I'm just going to put Diggory. Week one. And make a new folder on my desktop. Oh, also forgive me if this is old information that I've told told you like years ago. Okay. Forgive us if we forgot. So you have to tell us again. <laughs> I have to tell us again. Yeah, so yeah. Well, you know what? Tramp kind of has a mustache a bit, like a mustache and a beard. Mm hmm. Got like a scruffy muggle. Yeah, he kind of looks like a Jack Russell more than the Scotty. Look, he probably has a bit of terrier in him. He could, and he was kind of a mutt. Yeah. I love his. I love like the hat. I yeah. love that. That's that's the look we're going for with this character. I love that. For sure. And take another look at the hats that I referenced. I was a sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm humbling to myself. Yeah, I'm just talking because like I, I'm trying to put a hat on his head, but I I have trouble putting hats on characters' heads. Me too, and that's why mine doesn't have a hat yet. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe ever. <laughs> or maybe that's true. If you don't like drawing hats, don't put a hat on him. I want him to have a hat. Man, I like drawing digigrade legs, but they are kind of hard to pose sometimes. Yeah. Look, I'm okay with drawing regular legs, but then it's like you kind of like second guess yourself. Like, oh, what if the curve goes that way? It's like, no. Yeah. I kind of just have to like stop thinking about them as digigrade legs and just think about them as regular legs and then tran and then sort of like translate that into digigrade legs. Exactly. So that's, that's actually a term I'm not familiar with, but I figure it means animal legs, right? Yep. Yeah, like, yeah, basically. I think it's in reference to, like, digits like your toes, like they're walking on their toes rather than... Oh, yeah. yeah that, sounds, that sounds right. I think a, a furry drawing book I had talked about that. So the other one is plantigrade, and I think it's like plantar fasciitis, when we're talking about the heel planters. walkers. Yeah, heel walker, where these guys are toe walkers. Well, oh, wait, do we sense. know? For, for a second, I was thinking, oh, I'm going to give them like those swords that, what's it called? Like, you know, the ones where the people wear the masks when they do it. And it's like the store, oh, they're like really skinny sticks. A foil. Yeah, yeah first a foil or rapier. Yeah, first I was going to give him a rapier, but then I remembered, oh, wait, you said something about a very intricate sword? 
Yeah, I was kind of thinking of like a uh, rapier or something, just something that looks fancy. Like he wouldn't just swing around and get play more. The big. Like something like this guy. Oh, yeah. yeah okay, so it's animal. fancier at the hilt. Yeah, yeah, like Three Musketeers sword type. Rapier. Okay. Epe. Yes. That's a, that's a good you know, crossword word. And part of me wants to show you this, but then it's like, ooh, this isn't this isn't super duper readable. So I gotta, I gotta do something Clean about it. Up a little bit, huh? Yep. It's true. If we were working in our studio, we need to show something to our boss. If he's like, I don't know what these scratches are, you get fired. <laughs> you gotta make sure it's readable before. Yeah, I'm glad that I finally done that because I used to show people things without cleaning it up first. I mean, there's really no harm in it, just like at home, but. The worst part is just like they can't tell what it is because they don't know which lines you're going to keep and which <laughs> ones you're going to erase. Yeah, I don't like that. Name. Yeah. Oh, f another fun fact about uh, Jack Russell's that I don't think I've ever told any anyone before, but they have incredibly long eyelashes. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's because like they're digging dogs. Like they like they typically what they do is like they dig into like fox dens, and they have like the long eyelashes to keep the dirt from falling in their eyes. Oh, well, that makes sense then. Yeah, part of me is thinking, ooh, maybe I can do that with this guy. It's like, nah, I don't. I think I want to do that with this guy. Also, it's kind of funny when you just, but it is kind of funny, like, if you actually designed, like, a Jack Russell character with, like, accurately long eyelashes. Yeah, would, I can imagine it'd be a little bit awkward. It's like he's wearing false eyelashes or something. Yeah. But, and you keep thinking this is a, a female character. Yeah, that too. It's kind of shorthand for female. Yeah, and I'm looking at some of these dogs and I think, did they cut their eyelashes before doing this? <laughs> Who knows, man, in this world. Or else just Photoshop, maybe. Yeah, I don't know, because, I don't know, maybe just, like, my dogs specifically. And maybe some of them just don't have it. But it's just something, like, I associate with the dogs. With long, yeah, long hair. A lot, also, a lot of these pictures are very uh, short hair. Now I'm going to have to look up rapiers, because I don't know a lot about rapiers. I don't think I put too many on the Pinterest board, but... How do you spell rapier? Mm. Let me how it sounds. R-E-P. R-E-P. A-P. R-A. Yeah, Ray. R-A. P-P-I. P-P-I. R-E-R. E-R. Oh, yep, there they are. A 
oh wow, futuristic rapier. What does that look like? Not that's not <laughs> that's not what we're doing, but I but I just suddenly got curious. Yep, you gotta be careful with that. Sometimes you fall down the hole. Yeah, yeah, also also a lot of these are just these some of these are either they don't look futuristic or they don't look like rapiers. Which is weird. But okay. Okay, did you finally finish watching your, your kids show that you liked that's made by a comedian you liked? Um, I'm on season five of eight, so I'm beyond the halfway point. Oh, cool. What show is this? Odd Squad. Huh. I think I saw it on TV and I watched it and it was, it was, in, it was cute. Yeah, it's mostly just cute. I mean, every once in a while there's a really good joke, but... Most of the time, it's just cute little kids running around, learning yeah. how to tell time on a traditional clock, or what was it today? Yeah, like, it's not the thing I'd go super out of my way to watch, but it's cute. Exactly, yeah, but you might not turn the channel if it happens to be on. Yeah. I'm going to save image. Also, now comes to the classic question of, do I want the ears to be under the brim or over the brim, like using little holes? Yeah. Since I have floppy ears on my guy, I don't have to deal with that. <laughs> yeah, because the this Jack Russell are kind of like in the middle between like perky ears and floppy ears. Yeah. It's like they're flopped over, but they're kind of perky. Yeah, when you get to your legs, they're going to be pretty much the same as human legs until you get down to the ankle. That's where the big change is. And one thing you notice about dogs is like some, like the difference between their looks what, when they have hair versus when they have fur. Yeah. It's like the same breed with like hair or fur is look surprisingly different. I don't know, it's like I'm looking at Google images and a lot of them look similar, but I'm just like thinking about my dogs specifically. About like how they're dog. Yeah, like how my like I just compare them a lot, like how like despite coming from the same litter, they look very, very different. They look pretty different. It's like one of one of them is like really hairy and like skinny and energetic and the other one is like like shorter, fuzzy. And like he's kind of he looks overweight, but that's kind of just what some Jack Russells look like, how their bodies are built. Um, and he's also just Relax, like ridiculously lax. Mm -hmm. anyway, uh, I like the I like the thing you're going for. Thank you. I'm gonna go for an Afghan hound, but not quite as furry. Yeah, I love the dogs. They're just super long. Yeah, I do too. Good news is I looked it up and apparently like, but if you do them like where they're really short and stubby, they can have health problems. When you do them super long, they typically don't. Huh. Mm. Is that true of all dogs or just the Jack Russell's? 
Um, no, I'm talking about, like, in general, like, with dogs, because, like, you know, if you get, make them, like, super stubby, they can have, like, breathing problems or walking problems and stuff. When it's, like, with the dogs are, like, super long, like, typically, I, I, I've Googled it and I haven't come across any, like, like, health deficiencies specifically related to being long. I think the dachshunds might have some back problems if they jump up and down the couches and stuff, but... Probably not as many health problems as pugs and what are the other ones that look like little Chinese lions? The uh, chihuahua. Not uh, chihuahua. You know those ones that are like real, they've got like a pug face but they have really long fur. You know, I, I know Chinese what you're talking face. about but I don't know. Yeah, I can't remember the name at the moment but those guys I think have some health problems. Have you seen like those pictures like a, this specific type of dog? I don't know what it's called but they're, they look almost like dolls and it's like at first glance you think oh that's cute but then it's like you start to think about the logic of wow that looks like a doll puppy thing yeah you realize oh that's probably not good for it not good you guys are talking about hats and even if you don't want to put a hat on your character this might come in handy later if you ever want to do a character with a hat and you switch to different colors it's easy to oh i could use a, a, some hat advice right now yeah oh, like hat advice. yeah so most That's... hats have two sections like a top hat has the cylinder part and then we have the brim so i always go for the cylinder part first no matter what kind of hat it is and i take it right off of my circle so that i know it fits on my character's head and it'll look like like a fez like aladdin's hat at first then you can attach the brim to it and you'll be sure that it fits around your character's head since you've already measured it against the original circle. Oh, that's that's a really good piece of advice. Thank you, Betsy. Wow, oh, yeah, that, that was kind of... Attach the hat to the head. Yeah, okay. just go off the head first. You can even start where it's touching the head. I don't know whether I want his brim to go up or down. I think he looks a little more goofy when it's up, huh? And it's down. But the beautiful thing about digital art is I can just copy this paint or copy and paste this face. And compare. Hey, do you guys have like a specific like favorite breed of dog in general? Oh. Like nice dogs. I like, I pit, like bulls. Oh. Oh, pit bulls. Me too. My brother has a pit bull mix and she's like the sweetest thing. That's, that's my opinion too, that they are incredibly sweet. Now you have to train them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have to train them right. Yeah, but it's like, yeah, she's like a cute, she's like, I think she's also a shepherd not a german shepherd but i forget what kind but she's like a she's like a pit bull shepherd mix and she's like just a big baby like yeah. my brother when she goes to the when my brother takes her to the vet she crawls into his lap all scared she's like kind of a big dog to be in a lap oh, and, yeah and people comment on how cute that is and it embarrasses him Mm -hmm. And the entire reason, most of the reason, I don't know if it's like specifically that, but like my brothers also had like a big energetic dog when we first got her and she was a puppy and they didn't want her to be hurt. So they left it, left her with us at our house and she was adorable. And my mom, what she would do is she would often like put her on the couch with her, take her in her lap and pet her. And I guess she kind of got used to being a lap dog and it kind awesome. of never left. Yeah, I could see that happening. Hopefully that was fine with your 
brother has. Yeah, they don't like it, but they they tolerate it sometimes. Like when I come over, when me and mom come over, they are allowed to be on the couch when they supposedly typically aren't allowed to be on the couch. Ah, right. They are allowed to be on their beds, though, so. Like they will lay with my brother when, or the people in the house when I forget what I was about to say. That happens, that happens, that's basically it. So we're gonna have the we have a cat, mouse, bird, lizard, deer, bear, pig, and artist choice. Yep. That makes me excited. Yeah. The ones I'm specifically excited for are mouse and lizard. Ooh. I'm not surprised at the lizard. That's something yeah. you, you Oh yeah, that's totally in character for me. Yep. <laughs> the mouse specifically, because I don't know the personality. Uh, so it might so it might be null once we find out about the mouse, but I, I can't stop thinking about that grasshopper mouse. Grasshopper mouse. It's the carnivorous one that howls to establish oh. territory. And they and they eat scorpions and snakes and other mice. Look. <laughs> I don't know. It's like, I just think they're so neat because like, if look, their skull, the teeth look like, you know, they'd be like her, like herbivores, but then they're just like 90% carnivores and only occasionally eat, eat other stuff. Crazy. Yeah. And I, yeah. I think about them so much and just think about how cool that is to me and about how their body is able to turn like scorpion venom into painkillers and i think that would be really cool if like you establish like a mouse world kind of like that one john bluth film and then you actually establish like them as a species and how cool and scary they would be definitely be the bad guys <laughs> And also, I think it would be cool if, like, as a species, they, like, actually maybe farmed scorpions, or they just hunted scorpions specifically for their venom. And, like, use them. Like, they could be, like, assassins who would use the venom on both their enemies and themselves. Ooh. That's kind of beyond kid stuff, so I don't think John Bruce would make that film. <laughs> what? Kind of beyond kid stuff, though. I don't think Don Booth would make a film. Yeah, well, it was kind of dark. No, <laughs> yeah, the, the Secret of Nam was pretty scary. I remember being terrified. Yeah, so I feel like maybe not that deep into it, but it's like I could definitely imagine, like, I don't know, like, maybe something like a scary mouse who, see, who you find out is act, actually eats other mice. Who you think Sounds is like the bad guy for sure. Yeah. Yeah, but still, just man can't stop thinking about him. Also, one other th name that the uh, grasshopper mouse is called is the werewolf mouse. Oh, yeah. Uh, because of the howling and the eating other mice. Oh, they also eat poisonous scorpions. Wow. Wait, no, wait, they're venomous scorpions. Never mind. I don't think they eat them for the venom. I think they just eat them because 
the meat on the centipede. Oh, wait, I said, did I say centipede or scorpion? You said scorpion centipede last time, but the first time you said scorpion, yeah. Oh, yeah, they do eat both centipedes and scorpions. And I was going to say, oh, yeah, the, I watched a video once where it, where the, it, where it like went up against a venomous centipede. I don't think they can like do the like do the thing with the centipede where they can like turn it into a painkiller. Yeah, but do this painkiller thing. What? Painkiller like for the mouth of the painkiller? Yeah, it's like if a scorpion like they they evolve specifically so if a scorpion stings a f uh, the mouse, mm -hmm. it, it, like their body, like turns it from a poison into a painkiller. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, that's so cool to me. That'd be so frustrating to the scorpion. <laughs> oh, yeah, the scorpion is dead. They eat, they kill and eat the scorpion. Not that I mind too much, but I think a scorpion, gosh, evolved to be. A scorpion. <laughs> How unfair. Yeah, well, like a bunch of different animals like evolve into weird niches. I, I kind of think that's cool, like just how animals evolve to be like in like super specific niches. Yeah, and just to make sure that some other species doesn't get out of control. Yeah, like how whales are basically evolved to the point where they, um, where some species of whale, um, their diet consists almost entirely of being able to suck up giant squid through in their mouths and eat them. Mm. They must yeah. be like the deep sea whales then, right? Because don't the giant squid live down there? Yeah. What? 626 already? Well, you got four minutes. Yeah, this guy is still kind of sketchy, but... Yeah, mine too. But I have an idea of where he's going, so that's good. And again, if you have no idea, you just look at that Pinterest board and you pick one thing from that picture, one thing from that picture, steal like an artist, put them all together, and you've got something new. So we've, we've, we're moving on here. We're going to be doing something else next week. So what should we aim for? terms of this character to have um, totally finished or just have a, a usable <laughs> sketch? Or... I would aim for your final line work ah, because okay. the final line work would mean that the design is done. If you're kind of like, oh yeah, I'm going for something like this, I might change something later, then your design isn't really done. So if you get it to the point where like, yeah, this is the one you would color, this is going to be your final and that would be a good, good milestone to be at by next week. So you have three of them up there and, and you just repeated him so you could play with his clothes, yeah, right? Yeah, his clothing, his cloak. I think I like this one in the middle. He's going to have a padded vest, which I just stole right off of Pinterest. And that uh, little maybe knee armor, maybe a puffy shirt like uh, the Musketeers. So he's a little bigger on top and a little leaner on the bottom. But yeah, that's the best part of digital. You can just copy paste, try out some things. Once you find one you like, then just keep going on that one. I need to practice using my tablet though, so that I can, because. Oh, you have a tablet now? I have always had a tablet, but I haven't really learned to use it. <laughs> uh -huh. and, and so everything is crummy. You know, yeah, it's a lot harder to draw on tablets for sure. <laughs> you make it look easy. <laughs> yeah, still, I feel like it. I don't uh, don't do as good a work on digital as I do in pencil and paper. But maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm it's so mind. much fun though to be able to you find something you sort of like and to be able to duplicate yeah. it and, instead of going, oh, now I have to draw that again and again and again, and I don't want to mess it up. Oh yeah. <laughs> So oh, I, I advantage. Oh wait, does this character have a shield? He can. Yeah, he can if you want him to. If you don't think you would, don't do it. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure this guy out because at first I was thinking of 
like, I don't know, like, part of me is thinking I think he has, under the coat, maybe as light armor, because originally I wasn't thinking of him as having armor, but then I realized he probably should. He's but a knight, he, right? That's the whole, Yeah, he, that's he's his job. And a knight, so, even though I'm going for more of a Three Musketeers, I'm still doing, like, leather armor, maybe some chain mail. Right, <laughs> instead of on a horse that has to carry his heavy armor. <laughs> yeah, that, that was... He has to carry his own armor. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say that uh, there are no horses because horses are people. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, right. That wouldn't be any good at all. Yeah. <laughs> you could go with the thing where some, some things do, where, in, where it's like they make up creatures or they make like bigger creatures. Like instead, yeah. of, like instead of having cows, they have giant beetles. True. Yeah, you can do that. And anything that's not in the briefing, if you're just like, oh, does this guy, you know, like you said, have a shield or does he carry any other weapons? If it doesn't say no, then the answer is yes. <laughs> All right, that, that sounds good. I'm kind of looking up D and D. I looked up D and D rapier to see like character, various characters with the rapiers, and see kind of like in a general sense, like. Mm -hmm. What that looks like. Yep, whenever you're not sure, just take a look at the Pinterest board or do a quick search. Sometimes you got to put an um, alarm on your phone or set a timer so you don't get sucked down into research land. Right, thanks for doing all that research. Then we don't <laughs> go down there at all if we don't want to. Now yeah. I'm looking at like this character who confuses me because like on like her calf, not calf, like or is it the calf? I forget. But on her leg, it looks like almost like she has a tiny shield. But I'm trying. But oh yeah, I've seen those before. You know, I'm oh, yeah. trying to figure out like, like she in her in her other hand, it's like she's got a knife. So it's like, does she use that really tiny shield? I imagine it might just be a protection for her legs, so that nobody tries to take out her legs. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like a circuit, tiny circular shield. Like it's about, I'd say it's smaller than a frisbee. Yeah, yeah, I've seen those. I'm pretty sure they're just leg guards, like a different style of leg guard. Okay. All right. Uh, well, time to wrap it up, and I will hopefully. Oh, can I show you guys? Yeah, like, let's see what you got. It's rough. It's it's rough. But here. Oh wait, do you get? But uh, do you want to show me here? There? there we go. Yeah, sure. Does anybody want to see their thing? There we go. Now try it. Okay. Yeah. There's my boy. I don't okay, see one it. okay. Oh, look at him. So cool. His little jack. Oh, there he is over on the side, too. His yeah. <laughs> oh, and here's the dog that reminds me of my dog's parents that, like, inspired this look mostly. Yeah. Yeah. There, yep. I like it. I like where it's going. And it's got ear. Like, it, the ear is kind of under the hat. And they, do you think that's okay? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. If you want to see the ears, you can tilt his hat like more on the back of his head. But if you don't mind it being cut off right there, it looks fine. Yeah, I think I might tilt it back a little. Uh... Yeah, let's copy, paste it, move it over, try it out. Do what you Wait, it's supposed to have like little knee guards too. Like I, I want him to have pants. He doesn't okay. need to have pants. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I want him to have oh, pants. Oh, he's allowed to have pants. Yeah, he's allowed <laughs> to have pants if you want him to have pants. Go for it. Yeah. Oh, Kristen, did you? Did you? Are Here's you going to share So far. Oh wait, hold on. Let me stop sharing because I can barely see. Uh, let me pin your video here, or maybe I can spotlight it for everybody. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, this, look at that coming along. Little half guy. He's he's probably going to look like his father mm -hmm. here. <laughs> but, oh, wait, there's his father right behind him. Oh. oh no, wait, you're supposed to you're supposed to design the father too. No, I just d decided I, I had designed a father and I thought, oh, I don't like him that much. I want, <laughs> I want him to be cute. Oh, looking so good. He's a, he's a young knight. Oh, wait, Betsy, I didn't see your final thing because I was working on my oh, thing. Oh, my Can final thing. Let me show, Let me show mine. Let me share screen. It's not actually final yet, but this guy in the middle. probably. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I like him a lot. I like I like his I like his deal a lot. I like I like how he he kind of just looks. He has an attitude. Oh, boy, and, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he looks like I, he's from I the like theater, him. right? Yeah, he does. He's definitely flamboyant. 
Yeah. My guy needs a little flamboyance. Well, we'll put a hat on him. Yeah, we could put some kind of feather or bow or something, some, some kind of bling. And it'll well, happy 4th of July, guys. Yep, have a good happy 4th of July. Keep your dogs happy. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're going to get plenty of medicated treats tonight. <laughs> good, good. Keep them safe. And you guys stay safe. See you next week. All right. See you next week, everybody.